what else is attached to this board. Can I see what this is called anymore clearly? Not really. You can see that there's tabs here, three tabs that corresponds to three slots in this bracket here. So basically those three slide in there and then those two plastic clips are holding that up right. We've got a cable here, red, black and blue. Presumably that's you know nine volt, twelve volt and five volt DC. Probably be pulling on the plastic, not the cables themselves there. Come on. Right, yeah, that was a bit stiff. We've only got the one cable left. I'm trying to remind myself where that's actually running to. That's what we unplugged from. I thought it was part of um, the record playback board. It wasn't. It's actually a double ended cable. If you're deconstructing this, you end up with like a cable. It's like red at one end and white at the other end, like that. That's where it's going from this end of this board to this plug on this board. Being wound along here to this little cable tidy here. The only thing that's keeping this mic instrument PCB held up against the chassis are the washers on these four quarter inch jack sockets. Um, you could use needle nose pliers, but um, I've got a 14 millimeter socket from a socket set. Each of those is gonna be held on with this um, plasticated paper. I don't know, anyway, it's this kind of carbon washer thing. And a nut. I'll come back once I've removed all of those. Yeah, just slots it like that. You access any soldering you needed it to do. Get these meters out. Um, we've still got the one cable attached down here, so it's the only one with three pins here. Then the way that works is you sort of tip it from the back. So I actually uh, had a bit of a kind of Krypton factor moment trying to get that back in. And I reconstructed this for the first time. So you go in from the back like that, tip it like that. It should sit like that. I mean, this foam's toast, but you can see there was a strip of foam. This is going behind here. It's really just the pressure of this plate at the front that keeps those in place. There are three screws that are holding the stoker board up against this metal chassis. Remove them off screen with the larger of the two kinds of screwdriver and uh, add those two pink pile with all the narrow ferrule brassish looking screws on them. Beg your pardon, this is all part of the same unit. So I've actually got one screw where I'm poking with the screwdriver here and one here that needs to come off as well. Notice as well that the screws that I took out are longer than some of them that are of that type. Because I can't really get those two screws all that easily, I'm a little bit worried now about the weight of this front plate putting strain on these ribbon connectors. I'm just going to detach these little daughter boards from the front case. So it's smaller of the two screw types. And uh, what I'm going to do here, and perhaps this is a sensible way for you to organise yourself as well, rather than having a component box, is to actually just put these screws back into the plastic mounting post. I'm less likely to lose them that way, or get them confused with other screws in the build. Because as you've already heard me moaning, there's a lot of different kinds of screws on this build. Yeah, um, I'd really like to get this out. I've pulled out another two long screws from the bottom there. I'm going to need to attach these. So these just pull out to detach this header here which is coming from the power board. So the cables are getting trapped in the bracket there. But yeah that all comes away one big group like that. Unfortunately somewhere in that process you see that a couple of those ribbons are snapped. These things are delicate. I mean, I don't really like these as a choice. I've never seen a ribbon cable in here where I've been like, oh, I'm really glad they put a ribbon cable in there. I mean, I suppose it takes up a bit less space than the regular wires or bunches of wires. But from my point of view, somebody trying to repair these things are more hassle than they're worth. 
I mean, what I'll have to do is cut that off there, cut back, cut that off there, cut back the plastic, resolder it all in, you know, it'll end up, this cable will be a centimetre shorter than it was for the repair. I'm not going to take apart absolutely everything on this, uh, but we can see that this board and uh, this fluorescent meter preventing us from accessing the underside of this board which I suppose if we had a bad pot or something we might need to access it so I'm going to remove one two three four screws here and two screws of a different size here so that we get access to that board these four you have marked them in pink in color so you know they're the narrow ferrule going into metal type once I've removed those, I'll comment on the length of them. We'll have a look at what kind of screw this was. I can see that I've put black around that, so they're another new screw type. That's it removed. Little thing to notice is that while there are holes for the screws, whoops, hitting the camera, um, on this side, this metal bracket, on this side, there aren't any holes. Uh, and so they've got like a separate little plate. Seems like an awful faff, but when you put that back in, then I've got to put this little plate behind it and uh, that's what the screws are actually biting into they're the shorter of this kind that I'm grouping together under the arbitrary colour pink and then the screws that came out from underneath the meter they're a little bit narrower in the shaft and they've got a smaller recess for a smaller size of screwdriver so really the only thing that's still attached on this side is this headphone socket. There's a single screw holding it in place. I'm trying to unscrew that without elbowing over the cup of tea that's off screen to my right. Oh man, this is an awkward fucker to take apart. I suppose, you know, if a cable broke off there or something, it would be much easier to deal with that with that detached. You'd need a 14mm socket or you could just use even those pliers if you wanted to replace this jack altogether and detach it from that little plate. So what have we got left? Um, there's a punching out socket here. Again, 14mm socket set or a pair of needle nose pliers for that. If you needed to remove this remote control socket then there's two screw screws holding it into the chassis. You can see there are all these Maybe one, two, three is probably a fourth one in here, but there's a stabilization plate. Well, stabilization plate, God, I said pompous, but anyway, there's this big fucking plate at the bottom of this transformer. The transformer itself is attached by four screws, so the likelihood of you needing to replace the transformer, you know, that that magnet in there is going to break or somehow. The coils in there are going to fuse, I think, is pretty low. Really, the only other thing that you're likely to need to remove is the power conditioning board. You know, at some point in the future, it's going to be prudent to replace all these capacitors. They will leak eventually. I mean, they're not bulging, so they're okay just now. I know it powers up fine. You can see there's a couple of rectifiers here as well. Maybe they would need to be replaced. There's voltage regulators on this heat plate. There is a screw down there. It's in there where my finger's pointing. It's probably not very easy to see. Uh, remember earlier I was whinging about this one little screw of this type and it was uh, attached to a tiny little plate that was holding on, holding some daughter boards still that were attached to the record playback board here. Well, it's not the only screw of that type, there is another one down there. And then, it's a funny way around to do something, have you seen? There's an earth wire. So, like, the other end of that terminates in the board there. So there's obviously two parts of the board that they couldn't get to the layout so that the ground would line up. And so <laughs> wired it via this ring connector here, which is also how this side of the board attaching there. And there's the rare Scottish sun getting in the way of my filming again. Um, but basically those two screws plus tabs at the bottom of this board here, how this is all sitting. So I'll unscrew those screws. This one, by the way, is just the standard screw like this that I've been putting in my pink compartment, you know, short, narrow ferrule brass. We'll have a look at this board once I take it out. With those two screws out, it's still, it's a tight fit to get it out. So you can see that these two screws are what are holding this heat sink 
for all these voltage regulators in place. We need to remove that. Presumably there's some sort of thermal paste on these. Uh, there's like a little plastic layer between that plate and the heat sink. They obviously don't want current conducting to this plate. Probably would need to if you're going to do a recap. Could you reach in there and get at these caps? Probably just about. And as you can see, here's the slow blow fuses as well. Three rectifiers, I guess that's for five, 12, and whatever it is, 10 volt that the op amps for the core playback board and mixer board are working from. Anyway, so you can probably hear from me moaning. I mean, that's like not a very easy one to take apart. Not something I would relish having to do again very often. I hope that was helpful. Um, stick around in the channel for more teardowns, recording technique stuff, demos, reviews, just a lot of cassette tape based content. Bye.